Yo. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode, what is it, 157 of the Planet Destiny podcast. We're back. <laughs> number two, though. Number, it's really number two, but <laughs> no <many> conditions. <laughs> bureaucracy around here, it's ridiculous. Eviscerate the proletariat. But we're back to talk some more. <laughs> Destiny 2, war mind goodness. It's been another wonderful week in the world of Destiny. And this week, we've got some familiar faces and some even more familiar faces. As our special guest, you love him, you know him, he's got beautiful hair, he's to my immediate right, Mr. Ramez. Welcome back, sir. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening, not good morning, good evening. <laughs> I'm sure it's, it's morning somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, thanks for coming on the show today, we're happy to have you here, man. Thank you. Excellent. And of course, PD's very own... Beautiful bearded man. No, not Mega. He's dealing with screaming beautiful babies. Mr. Danfinity drops the bars of gold. What's up, dude? Hello. I Hi, this... guys. Yeah, wait, welcome to the show. Thank you. This is, this is exciting. I'm, yeah. I'm excited. And, and, and not just as a guest thing. Yeah, this is a more permanent role for you, as if I'm recalling things correctly, right? Yeah. Yes. So I'm... I'm... Yeah, I'm just I'm just happy and humbled to be here. Thank you guys. <laughs> We're happy to have you, man. So uh, you know, of course, whenever we have a guest on the show or, and a new host, and that's right, Dan Finity, he's the new host of the PD podcast. Say welcome, everybody. We're gonna give Hello. you guys, a, you know, of course, an opportunity to tell everybody who you are. You're two famous gentlemen, so you know, not like people don't already know, but this is the part where you shill, shill for all your stuff, <laughs> Mr. Ramez. I hear you do t very interesting Twitch things, like raids and carries and stuff. Oh, God. Um... <laughs> How was Spire of Stars, fam? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know when the carries are going to happen, but I'm really enjoying the raid. A yeah. lot more than Narcos, actually. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm hmm. surprised. I had a lot of fun with Argos. Here. Mm -hmm. It's not easier than Argos. You really? It's easier? Yep. It is. It is easier. I'm just going to go ahead and call shenanigans. Starting the show off with controversial <laughs> opinions. This man. Hot takes. Hot. We're, okay, so this man is Ramez, Ramez05. You can find him on Twitch. We'll have a link to him in the chat and whatnot. He's a great guy. We've had him on the show before. Does raid carries. Has been doing them since, like, Vault of Glass, I want to say. You were one of the first really big Twitch streamers uh, doing uh, raid carries and whatnot. But you've got a, a very rich history of it, man. Yep, I'm kind of taking a break since then, but with this DLC, <laughs> I've come back. I'm yeah. ready to bang my head against the wall yet again. So, <laughs> kind of a hard habit to stop, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> now, uh, now, before we introduce Danfinity, I'm going to have to ask you to defend your statement. Spire of Stars is easier than Eater of Worlds. Um. Yeah. Uh, well, a jumping puzzle is not really i wouldn't really it's i don't think it's harder or easier i think it's just a jumping puzzle but the mechanics are pretty simple and the boss damage phase is significantly less hectic than argos for sure mm -hmm. like i remember that my first time i actually got to a damage phase we accidentally got down a third of itself with like <laughs> everyone dying it was like what we didn't even do anything so, so kind of figured like if we actually knew what we were doing we do even better so and mm. that's been the case really so that's you know, insane dude you know i i haven't done or uh, spire of stars yet but um you know i've done the other two raids plenty of times and I'm, I'm just trying to think of the the argos boss fight and yeah you're right when you get to damage phase in that it gets a little hectic with the seekers yeah. coming at you with argos firing mm -hmm. the detain shield at you and all that kind of stuff and I, I guess now, yeah, now that you mention it, you know, when it comes to damaging yeah. the final boss in Spires, you know, find your spot, shoot them. It's rockets. just a lot of mechanics that everyone has to figure out. And once it becomes more muscle memory, everyone's going to see that it's like, wow, this is just way easier. But it's just so many mechanics they throw at you. Yeah. That they're, they're essentially the same mechanics you learned during the raid, but they're just doubled up. Yeah, and people are know. still like learning them. So. I when I when I went in there, you know, it was most likely because I was like super mega under leveled. I was getting, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I was get, I was receiving L's and hands from Scions. So, 
all over the place, huh? Just not. Yeah, dude, dude. Like once, like I, a sign would just like look at me with his little beady eye, and my guardian would just like, collapse. <laughs> I learned a couple of strategies with playing with lower level people for the raid. I don't know what I'm gonna start doing, like raffles and carries and stuff like that. But I learned a lot about the raid and like where you want to put people based on their power level, just because of like, like how strong the ads are and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so what? Like, oh, yeah. go ahead. I was gonna say, so what's the strat you employ for for beating the boss? Uh, there are a couple of strats to beating to beating it. Um, strat I've been utilizing with my teams has been just the top left uh, cubby hole thing there. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. It's, but people have been splitting up and going left and right. People have been going left and right in the very back. And there are people that have been utilizing the like the strat for like um Vog where everyone is just completely separate. Remember for Atheon back in the day? Everyone would just be spread out firing their mm-hmm. G horns. So people that do that too. So I haven't tried out all the strats to see which is the best, but that's what we've been using. And it's working for you. Yeah, you, the, yeah. The, the cubby hole thing I, I find hilarious, and I, I wonder if Bungie's going to do something about that, like maybe spawn some centurions in that room just to <laughs> just to incentivize I, you to move a bit. <laughs> I mean, I don't think so. I think it can still get pretty hectic with ads in there if you're not That's careful. True. Yeah, some of them you do know. spawn from inside, right? Yeah, well, it's they don't spawn from inside. They come from outside. They spawn from the middle. It looks like, and they like slowly reach them. Reach the inside there. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. So you just have to have somebody on top of, of paying attention to the ads and keeping them out while everybody else is focusing? So, just right before the damage phase, before a shield drops, yeah. Not bad at all. What's your favorite drop from the raid thus far? Um, hmm. I have to, I have to say the Warlock armor looks the best. Yeah. I, don't, I haven't gotten much of the Hunter set yet. The Titan set looks just as bad as the Argus one, unfortunately. Ignore, get... ignore Nim's laughing. He's laughing for a reason. You'll get a chance to <laughs> pour out your salt in just a second, Nim. <laughs> oh, I haven't tried the Saturn in PvP yet, but it looks really good. Yeah, I mean, all right, go ahead, Nim. Just, just let it out. It's all right. Just, just <laughs> it's, it's unhealthy to keep that stuff inside and bottled up. Just let it all out, man. It just, just makes me so sad that the gear is just ornamented eater of world gear, man. <laughs> yeah. Dead oh, body. Is that what it is? Is that what they did? It good, but yeah. like it just it, it it's it's ornamented eater of world gear and it's silly. No. To <laughs> I didn't even realize that. I forgot what the ornaments look like. Well so so for Eater of Worlds, the ornaments for that one, which you can't even preview anymore, by the way. Right. Mm-hmm. Um it was it was just like a little glowy bit of like yellow on the armor, kind of like how uh, the prestige callus gear is, but this was like yellow. Um but the the base gear set for um, Spire of Stars is the same thing as Eater of Worlds, but it has a couple additions on it. So it looks like it, if that would have been like the ornamented set for Eater of Worlds, really. Oh, mm-hmm. huh. yeah. I didn't realize that because I finished the raid first in my Warlock and I got like the full set except the helmet. So mm-hmm. I couldn't see it because typically it's the helmet you'd know like if it looked like completely identical, yeah. but I didn't get the helmet. And the rig- and the rest of the armor set actually look completely different, so I thought it was a different set. <laughs> Until I played on my Titan. There's, there's like minor design differences. Like they added mm-hmm. like a couple of like logos and stuff like that to the actual. Like a set. knife when here, you- there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when you look at like the base gear set and like the armor and the robes, and you can tell this big time on, especially on the Titan set, which looks ridiculous. Uh, you'll be able to see the similarities of it. Just get a, just get a Titan from Eater Worlds and a titan with the spire of stars armor and you'll be able to see that they're like nearly the same thing Mm. Mm -hmm. that's disappointing (laughs) yeah now so speaking of the raid we know that the prestige version is finally going to be coming out is that later this month on the 29th or is that in the coming months i think that's like sometime in july isn't it yeah looking at it now it is July sometime. Okay, so that's that's with like the Solstice of Heroes and all that kind of stuff yeah. coming out, which we can mm-hmm. get into a little bit later. I wonder if the reason for why the new raid layer gear is basically just the ornamented Eater of Worlds gear, does that mean when Prestige comes out, it's going to have a different set of, of ornaments tied to it? Or is it just going to be the same thing? See, that's what I was thinking, because like you can't even preview anymore the yeah, ornaments for it's the gone. Eater of Worlds gear. It's, mm-hmm. They're just gone that would be awesome though 
I mean, I'm hoping it's like some kind of Age of Triumph thing where we see just like a different set for the prestige version. <sighs> yes. To incentivize that, that, you know, thing from doing it. But. Wouldn't it be nice to have Age of Triumph level ornaments for your, your exotic armors again? <laughs> <sighs> Sometime soon, hopefully. All right, that's, that's a heck of an introduction to Mr. Ramez. What about our other guest and new host? The one, the only, Dan Finity. Welcome. Hi. Great to have you, you here, man. You have been uh, you have been with PD for a bit now. You've been streaming on the PD channel, as I recall. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, yeah. why don't you take some time to introduce yourself to the audience who should already know who he, he is. If you don't, shame on you. <laughs> or shame. Four well, shames. A whole four shames on you. <laughs> <laughs> Not three. Not three. You get four. I will I will institute at least four more shames upon you for not knowing who I am. Um, <laughs> I, my, my name is Dan Finity. I run PVE activities uh, here on uh, Planet Destiny. Um, unless it's Iron Banner. I love Iron Banner. It's a lot yeah. of fun. And um, I, uh, I host a podcast called SideQuest Sunday, where I interview content creators about their secret origins um, outside of Planet Destiny. But yeah, I, I normally just like try to help people with their milestones, gonna try to do some like raid, raid helps probably in the coming uh, weeks. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much who I am. Right on. I'm also your new host, hi. Yeah, he's also Hello. our new host and he's great. We're happy to have you here, man. Welcome to the show. Thank you, happy to be here. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna point some of those same questions towards you. So have you done Spire of Stars? I have not. I have not touched it. I have just been grinding like milestones. <laughs> yeah, just been grinding milestones to get my light up, so that when I go in there, it's not a complete cluster. Yeah, <laughs> because like I know I'm. I've watched a little bit of it uh, on Raid Race Day. I watched Dado's team, and so I kind of I I know some of the mechanics already, but I haven't touched any of them. So I don't know. I'm told that I'll love it though by yeah. my regular team. Yeah, I'm right now. I'm content with just watching other people go through it. the The first mm -hmm. day of it was cathartic, watching everybody get to the final encounter super quickly, and then just get walled. Hit that for wall! <laughs> like I'm just sitting back, like that's that's not me. Nope. <laughs> I'm, I'm perfectly. I was like, I, I was like oh, this will be done in like three, four hours. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> like, not in the slightest. Yeah, I I loved it that like. Members of the Bungie team were just like, so uh, is anybody going to go for Worlds first? <laughs> <laughs> they threw some shade on that first. Yeah, like, what, what was it? They D did. said, this is what happens when you, you say our game is too easy. Exactly. Yeah. We, like, well, there you beautiful. go. Yeah, man. Me and, uh, me and a couple of buddies went in there first day, and it was just... <laughs> <laughs> I felt for you, man. Necked. I felt for yeah. you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you know when it, when it comes to Warmind, it's been out for uh, two weeks now, going on what three weeks this week. Uh, mm -hmm. So to our two guests and our new host, Dan Ramez, what are your favorite parts of Warmind thus far? Hmm. <laughs> the hard hitting questions. Probably for me, it'd be escalation protocol. Yeah. Mm hmm. I would agree with that. Escalation protocol, yeah. I think, is super fun. Um, I haven't, mm -hmm. I haven't, I haven't been able to clear it yet. I've gotten to uh, the final round, and I think this week it's like the knight with like the crota shield that you have to break before you damage him or whatnot. Yeah. I haven't been able to take him down. That time limit is killer. On that <laughs> I haven't thing, even man. attempted it yet this week. Just I've been just doing milestones and finishing the raid in yet still, and I feel like that's like the the major end game activity because it require because it, it requires nine people and it's yeah. mm -hmm. a four hundred light level activity. So it's technically supposed to be more challenging than the raid so yeah it, it is <laughs> kind of is it's absolutely I, no joke but i find the biggest challenge is getting nine people to actually group up together and to do it though that's the biggest challenge <laughs> yeah you know it, it was I, I don't know if it was a foresight thing or not but it, it's kind of weird that we can't bring a full fire team into uh an event that's almost specifically tailored towards a full yeah. fire team and a half <laughs> and I, yeah. I, I really hope that sometime in the future, or Bungie can can rejigger things so that we can get six to nine players and one fire team in there because it really is an incredibly fun activity when you've got nine folks in there all just running it. And it's a shame yeah. that you're kind of limited to just having a fire team of of three when you go in there, because 
it's fun. Escalation Protocol, mm-hmm. it's super hard, but it's really fun. I really enjoyed my runs to uh, to rank 7. And props to every team that's beaten it thus far. Like, I don't know how you guys are coordinating that. They're getting in, like, their bubble strats, getting right up to the boss, coordinating sword drops and, like, mm-hmm. tractor cannon hits. I thought my I thought the squad I was running with was super good when we when we got the boss to, like, a third of his health after, like, one damage phase, and then we just ran out of time because it took us forever to do that. <laughs> it's uh, I, I have no idea how people are uh, how people are beating this so quickly. But props to them and props to Bungie for making a fun in-game activity. Mm-hmm. I really mm-hmm. hope that they um I really hope that they 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 don't leave this kind of like in in Archon's Forge Prison of Elders sort of thing where it's like a one-off shot. I want there to be an escalation protocol for for Cabal. For Fallen, mm-hmm. for Vex, I, I want this kind of activity added in or expanded upon when the uh, expansion comes out later this year because it's fun. It's cool. I yeah, like it's it. really yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. And this week, the uh, the Escalation Protocols uh, boss, or at least one of the placements for it, is really giving off some D one vanilla vibes. <laughs> for those D one vets, immediately you get that. <laughs> Why don't you the explain? Good old, so the good old cheese of uh pushing atheon and the templar is back <laughs> this time, managed to get the escalation uh protocol boss over at the bray uh side of the map and he's and he's outside where the um the landing drill for or for the yeah the drill the public event drill that area right there you can push him off with an interceptor and it is dumb <laughs> yeah it's so silly i was watching people do that and it's just like wow this is just straight up like vault of glass just cheesing that templar with the nades until he just falls and tips over the ledge. <laughs> just oops <laughs> it's destiny so, i love it yeah and i mean although granted you know that cheese will complete the escalation protocol for you you'll get the chest but you won't get the post uh post boss drops like oh all, yeah the oh. weapons and armor drop from the boss himself and if you push him off the cliff you don't get those drops so mm. oh it doesn't get sent to your postmaster even it does not get sent to your postmaster wow. i think um i think houndish a buddy of ours had a um had a video on that and was able to confirm yeah, yeah you can do that It'll clear it. You'll get the chest with like your tokens and whatnot, but you're not going to get the legendary drop. So, <laughs> rip. So, Dan, same question to you. What's your favorite part of Warmind thus far? Um. So lately, I've been really digging into like the lore that they've added to the game, yeah. like to this expansion particularly. Um. While the campaign was short, they added just a crap ton for everybody to like read through and, and it has huge implications for the future of the, the game series as well. Um, I've been loving that. And I'm, I love the idea that um, like with the sleeper nodes and with the data fragments that it, it feels like there's something around every corner again. Um, when it comes like when it comes to like the base game, it, it, it kind of felt like that when, with the, with the ghost scans and everything, yeah. but yeah, the with the data fragments, you at least have the goat like like the ghost um, hunting that you that you did in the past. So there's definitely an element to those those just kind of secrets out in the world space that Destiny used to have. I think a great co- comparison is like the the, the Hadium flakes with um, with uh, the Taken King when those came out mm-hmm. and how that was tied into the sword quest. And then you've got these awesome uh, little data trophy things in Warmind that you blow up with the correct element. And boom, it gives you an exotic sparrow and a sword, a freaking awesome sword. And I, I mm-hmm. love, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I love that they've added these lore elements back into the game. Even with some of the quests that you complete with um, with Anna Bray, with some of those little mm-hmm. lore items that drop that <laughs> the game's kind enough to tell you, don't hold on to these. You can shard it whatever you want. <laughs> but um, they give oh, you... Oh, I thought that was like a joke that you're actually... <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I'm not gonna delete this since you told me to. Well, in three years, it. this is gonna give me the Kavostov year five. This that that's what's raisins gonna happen all over again. Yep, it's gonna be the raisins. But yeah, <laughs> my celery, dude. I do too. I'm not, I'm not giving that celery up. It means something. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love that they've added these lore bits into the game, especially with the Anna Bray quests, with like the nascent dawn thing going right now. It's literally a quest about getting her memories back. And then, you know, the, the mystery around her sister, Elsie, and all of that kind of stuff. I love that, they, that there seems to be more of a focus on mm-hmm. the, the lore bits that were kind of left behind when, when D2 first came out. 
for the most part. I mean, although you're right, we did have the, the ghost scannables throughout the environment that uh, told a bit of a greater story, and I'm glad to see that they're continuing. That. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Good choice, man. Good choice. Yeah, man. It's a lot of fun. All right, so let's, uh, let's move on a bit. We've got a neat little twab for this week. It brought up some things. We had a bit of a Destiny 2 development roadmap come out and talk about some future content, some really interesting stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to the dealer's choice. What do you guys want to start with? Iron Banner or the roadmap? What do you think is more interesting? Let's do... Um, oh, let's man. Let's do Iron Banner real quick. Cause, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's do Iron Banner real quick because they're, they're, they're throwing mm-hmm. a little something new in there with the Iron Banner. We got a we got a return of Bannerfall yeah. uh, this yeah. uh, this upcoming week. I'm pretty excited, and it's uh it's different now. So it's all torn and destructed and destroyed. It looks really neat. Yeah, yeah. So we've got Bannerfall coming back. It's going to be a part of Iron Banner this week and going into the rotation. Super happy that's coming back. I think that was one of the maps that a lot of people were requesting to come back. Still waiting for Rusted Lands, but I've got hope. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, it's, it's, so it's kind of taking place in a, a destroyed tower, which is, uh, you know, cool. goes along with the story of D2. Mm-hmm. Sniper lanes. People are going to mm-hmm. be using snipers on this, hopefully. Oh, man. Darcy's going to go to work. Darcy's going to go to work. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> a lot of, dude, the Silicon Neroma, that's like a super mm-hmm. good sniper rifle right now. I'm looking forward to seeing some snipe plays coming out. I couldn't get that to drop. I felt so bad. <laughs> which sniper was that? That was the, the Nightfall Pyramidian. Award one, the Pyramidian Sniper. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Damn, Dorama. but I don't, think, I don't think you can complain when you got the DFA in two shots. What? Look, man. <laughs> look, okay. That was fun. I don't okay. want to hear for it. For me, personally, for <laughs> everyone in my chat, it was a triggering event, and it was beautiful. <laughs> Kicking was from podcast there with you. now. <laughs> I, I I haven't I I can't say anything. I haven't even got I haven't gotten a single Nightfall exclusive reward. Not not a single Same. one. I don't expect Same. to get one because one. my RNG is terrible. And I'm glad I'm I'm glad yeah. I'm not alone. I'm among friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except Dan. Except Dan. Well, look, that was like the one, and then I got I got that uh, ghost with the aura around it oh, in yeah. two goes as well. I mean, you win some, you lose some, and then you win some, and you also lose. So it's fun. <laughs> Or you win, and you win, and your name is Dan Finity. Well, yeah, Dan Finity. Hashtag well, Dan Finity. The, 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 the Nightfall exclusive for this week was, what, a rocket launcher? Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Supposedly it's really good. Yeah, I saw somebody with it in the tower. It's got cluster bombs, and as far as D2 rockets go, that's all you need, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the new grenade issues. The new wolf packs. Yeah. But yeah, okay, so in addition to Bannerfall, of course, with Iron Banner, we've got some new ornaments! We got to see some new ornaments and some new weapons coming along. I gotta did say... Did they actually the show dude. off that stuff, or was that the data mine stuff? No, they actually showed it off in the, um, oh. in the TWAB for this week. I'll leave a link to it out in the, uh, the chat in just a second. But we got to see... Uh, we got to see Lord Saladin. We got to see his inventory. We got to see some new armor and whatnot mm-hmm. in there. We got to see some new weapons and whatnot in mm-hmm. there. And... Uh, Curiously, they've got the Season 2 ornaments and the Season 3 ornaments available on his vendor screen, so you might actually still be able to get those Season 2 ornaments if you didn't pick them all up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is mm-hmm. cool for me. I didn't get them all. I think the one the one that I didn't get was the one that required like melee and grenade kills, because this okay. is Destiny 2, and it takes a long time to get melee and grenade kills. I'm, yeah. I'm expecting to see a lot of... Shredder Titans in the wild. That's yeah. <laughs> Yo, the the I don't even care. Armor. The, I the, do like the armor. Yeah, the, dude, the ornament. You, you're Shredder. You're hunting yeah, turtles. You you're literally just hunting turtles in New York City. <laughs> this man, you put that on. You look like you're staking out every deep dish pizza spot in all of New oh York City, God. just waiting for a turtle to pop up. It looks cool. Oh, it looks really cool. I want that warlock helmet. Something fierce, dude. That that looks so dude. good. <laughs> like I was talking to my little brother about this, and and the Elder Scrolls fans out there are gonna love this. I think the warlock helm straight up looks like uh, the helm of Jigalag from uh, from Oblivion, which is a very <laughs> that's an old reference. I expect I somebody in chat. <laughs> Somebody in chat's going to appreciate that and look at it and be like, yeah, that's what it looks like. You look like you're a Daedric Prince. It looks cool, man. I'm looking it mm-hmm. up right now. 
Just look up Jigalag. He's got a big silver face. It's it's great. Good luck spelling <laughs> yeah. the name, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was. Well, I, you might want to do that in like a a um, incognito tab, just in case. <laughs> Unless, you're right. yeah. you're you know, Unless you're brave. Unless you're brave. Anyways, the uh, hunter gear is very uh, Dark Souls, and I'm like super mm-hmm. super excited about that. Looks really good. I'm I'm excited to so get all that stuff. Like um. I can't wait for, to get to get that gear. Like the, that looks really good. good. That looks really good. I yeah, I, I gotta say I'm happy with the ornaments for Iron Banner thus far. They've uh, they've been really impressive between you know season two and season. I'm definitely gonna be grinding for that helmet. We we you can actually take a look at some of the challenges for these right now, can't you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm not I'm not aware of exactly what the challenges are, but I think yeah, you can go and inspect them if you have the Iron Banner gear. They're all really easy. Really. They're, yeah, there's like, if I'm not mistaken, in chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's there's a few of them that's you know get a certain amount of super kills, get a su- certain amount of power, uh, power weapon kills, um, get wins and like, um, I can't remember. There's another, one, but they're all relatively easy to do, mm-hmm. unless they change them. But I, uh, I recall yeah. them being something fairly simple like that, like you yeah. know, get a hundred super mm-hmm. kills or power weapon kills. Stuff like that, look up a bunch of games. Yeah, it's good. I can do that. That's that. That's that is exactly on my skill level. I can do those <laughs> bungee things. <laughs> Meanwhile, still that's working cool. on the melee kill one for season two. Mm, grinding away <laughs> on it. Oh, Dan, Ramez, you guys gonna be playing Iron Banner this week? Yes. <laughs> Probably, honestly, yeah. I do want to play uh, Bannerfall, so yeah. And on. We got some new weapons and whatnot. I don't think we got the names of any of them, but it looks like we got a new sidearm, uh, auto rifle, uh, new energy hand cannon, sniper, rocket launcher, and a submachine gun. All of which yeah. donning those fancy new Iron Banner colors. Can't wait to see what the uh, stats are on some of those. Especially, I'm really interested in the submachine gun. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if it's going to be in the new arc, the new aggressive archetype for those that uh, you know the Huckleberry mm-hmm. and whatnot are in. The- I got my eye on that auto rifle, dude. I want that sidearm so bad. It kind of looks Iron Wreathy. Yeah, and I loved Iron Wreath. In Iron Wreath was great. Yeah, that was a great sidearm. Just go around acting like James Bond, <laughs> popping a couple shots. <laughs> Maybe the, uh, with the uh, with the drain, just channel the. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drain. Have a little face off between James Bond and uh, Francisco Scaramanga, the man with the golden gun. <laughs> You're going to lose, Bond, because Scaramanga probably also has Sturms. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to lose that fight. Get two-tapped, nerd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get two-tapped, nerd. <laughs> Farmed. But, all right, so that's Iron Banner. I do believe it's still 6v6, and it's going to be 6v6 control um, moving forward. That's something I, I kind of want to get you guys' opinion on. So I'm happy that Iron Banner is staying 6v6. I thought it worked really well with the uh, environment we have in right now. But um, what about control? Do you, are you guys okay with it staying as the control game mode, or would you like to see it cycle out? As long as it's not supremacy. <laughs> yeah, I think control <laughs> is the favorite game mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest fan of Clash sometimes, and supremacy is kind of hit or miss for me, so control mm-hmm. I'm never upset with. Well, it makes sense with the like, with how they changed Crucible for it to be control like that way you're all you're always clash sometimes felt like in d1 that it was like hurting cats to get everybody to do stuff (laughs) yeah and like in in control i mean it's still hurting cats but man manageable cats so it's it's it it uh, is a little bit more streamlined yeah yeah man and like i feel like also there's more opportunities for like those hero moments that bungie likes to talk about to where people are going to be piled up on those objectives and you can make those big plays possibly and also go mm-hmm. for objectives to make big plays so that too yeah and i think they changed the way um of course you know in iron banner control is different from normal control it's reverted back to the way destiny one control was where you actually have to capture your home point and i think uh, they they in their most recent sandbox change, they made it so that capturing points and completing objectives gives you more super energy. <clears throat> so yeah, there, there's a, a better incentive there to actually play the objective and not just treat control like it's Clash, like so many people love to do. But yeah, I'm so... not gonna lie, I tend to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nim just then wants to that... slay. Yeah, and then I see that like nobody else has gotten a point. I'm like, oh, 
<laughs> oh, yeah. I hope they bring back zone control, honestly, to make it yeah. purely objective. Mm -hmm. I'd be okay with that. I, you know, I, I would say I, I'd love it if a lot of old game modes came back. I'm still waiting for Rift to. Uh, hot, to no, hot, hot, hot tick, no Rift. <laughs> no Rift. <laughs> D defend yourself, sir. Why no Rift? Uh, I don't know, man. Okay, so all right, Rift is fun when you have friends. But I, yeah, I don't know if, it, if I true. just had a lot of bad luck and a lot of just like weird shit with the with the matchmaking. But I always found that like when when Iron Banner was rift for the several t or the couple times that it was, it was rough. We got destroyed every time I would go in there alone with literally just a sea full of blueberries. <laughs> <laughs> I would always end up with like either a team of three or a team of four or even a full stacked team where we couldn't even get close to like getting the thing because there was always one douchebag just like like right next to the thing with Playing a freaking uh, Matador yeah. 64 or a conspiracy theory D and it's like oh well I guess I'm just gonna go sit over here then so and people yeah. would run stacked rift just to get really fast wins because mm -hmm. you could yeah. win so fast with a good team exactly dude I mean, you you have friends now, though, Nim. Like, I mean, I do. You probably get all of us in this chat right now. <laughs> hey, console or PC? <laughs> PC. Okay, there. PC. Damn it. <laughs> Dan, join us, buddy. It's twelve dollars right now. Get it. I know. Yes, I, I'm. I'm going to get that. It's just the graphics card that's holding me back on the on this bad boy. I, I will. I will shill that until the sale ends. D2 on PC mm -hmm. is literally $12 right now on Humble Bundle. Get it. Just, even if you can't play it, just get it so you can have the key for the day that you can play it. It's such a great experience on PC, and this is like the best price I think it's it's been on a digital release. I think like Best Buy was selling it for 9 or 10 over the past week or so, but That's not everybody crazy. has a Best Buy. Yeah. <laughs> everybody has a Humble Bundle. Everybody yeah. can go there. <laughs> uh, it's good. Yeah, you know, I, I can agree with, with part of that on Rift. That was the game mode, I think, back in D1 that more than any other had the tendency to snowball really quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, like, dude. if you got put up against a coordinated team that was just stacked against you, they were just mm -hmm. rushing you down constantly. Yeah, yeah, and, and Ramez is absolutely right. That was the game mode that could end the quickest. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but, it, but here's the thing, Nim. You play Destiny 2, and you play Destiny 2 on PC. You're already yes. going up against nothing but stacks. <laughs> you know what you're talking about? <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Matchmaking. No. It's a thing. Mm. Oh, man. Although, granted, I think that was... Uh, they they, they re-implemented their intended change for matchmaking to kind of help even out solo queues, right? I believe so, yeah. They just recently turned that on. <laughs> Has it worked? <laughs> uh... <laughs> I've I've played a few matches of competitive because I'm I'm trying to get that rank up, yeah. And I've I've noticed less team ups for sure than previously. Really, but I'm still bad at game enough to work. <laughs> <thumb through. laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> First, in, in in a personal experience, not really. I still get destroyed, but. You know, I have noticed that, you know, I'm not running into, you know, teams of two or three or four as often as it was before. Good. I think, because uh, that, that is a real problem, especially on PC where the player base is smaller for yeah. uh, the, the solo players who are, God bless their souls, trying to get <laughs> the Redrix's Claymore. Like, I, I salute you, because that is a rough grind <laughs> in competitive uh, right now. Absolutely yeah. rough. But yeah, I still haven't ranked up for like once. Are you guys actively <laughs> trying for that right now? I'm not. No. no. I'm, I'm, I'm not bothering with it right now until like the PC player population thing increases. Every time what I go mean? into competitive, it's a stack. I'm, like, I'm, I'm the minority here. <laughs> Only, let, me know if, let me know if you make any progress there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, will do. You know, and Can you get reverse glory? You lose it. Go on a lose streak. Well, I mean, like, but <laughs> negative? Because that's probably what I'd get. Uh, I'll tell you in like two weeks. <laughs> All right, that sounds great. <laughs> There's too many losses in a row, and they disabled the playlist for you. Yeah, it's it's just, just, <laughs> you gotta stop. Just stop it's, doing this stop, to yourself. Stop feeding the other people. It's You're the intervention you. mode. You lose too many times, and it's like, you sit down. We, we've got to talk. Stop playing. <laughs> so you, so you have a point eight zero. Oh, oh my god. <laughs>
Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and so many people are grinding competitive right now because there's a worthwhile reward. You know, the, the Regix Exclaim War <laughs> is absolutely worthwhile. That thing is probably point for point the best PvP primary right now outside of, like, the uh, Vigilance Wing or the Graviton Lance. Graviton Lance, yeah. yeah. And, dude, Graviton is so good right now. I love that thing. And so... Quick okay. thing, I've been I've been reviewing that, and I finally got it done for the for the lands. That thing does a silly amount of damage when you get all three headshots. Yep, it does <laughs> a, a burst of the lands does seventy two <laughs> damage. There's seventy two, seventy one. So I think it's seventy one damage. So three bursts, you're dealing two hundred and thirteen points of damage. Enough to kill even, even somebody, uh, high resilience. Yeah, yeah, a max resilience. You can't do anything about it. The only thing that comes close to contending, at least right now, in the in the the things that I I was um, pairing it up with, which is what you saw earlier on, uh, was Jade Rabbit. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the Vigilance Wing gets a pretty massive damage drop off thirty five uh, forty five meters away from an enemy, and the Jade Rabbit is is like the Lance, where it doesn't really suffer too much of a damage drop off, yeah. if mm -hmm. at all. Um, so that one, when you chain three bodies and then you get the headshot, you are dealing roughly around 190 points of damage. So you can kill like somebody under five resilience. Um, but the Lance just deals so much more. It's static. Yeah. It, it's got great base range on it. I think it's masterwork increases its range even further. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? That would be gross uh, if it does. I'm not sure. And Holy the cool thing about it is those explosive things that come out, those are like one shots too, I learned. They're like random one shots sometimes. <laughs> we should oh we need, we need to test this, are. Nim. We need to test yeah. that. See exactly how much those orbs do, because uh they they're certainly powerful in PvE. Um, they're, they're powerful in PvE. But I I, I, I've gotten a, a couple clip. kills with it. Of uh, clearing the entire trial team, I was I killed two people and then I killed the two others behind them with it. <laughs> it was crazy. I, was, I didn't amazing. even know they were there. They were like around the corner. That's all right. That's Graviton knew they were there and it took care of it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Graviton knows all. It 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 oh it's so good right now. It, it, that has definitely been, or become my go to in uh, in PvP. You can definitely kill faster with Vigilance, but like Nim was saying, Graviton has a, it's got a better average performance because its range is better. You deal that huge amount of damage a ridiculously far distance off, and three taps are good, man. They're super yeah. good. But it's, it functions more like a scout rifle, though. Yes. It's so purely mm -hmm. range, though. Yep. Like, Vigilance Swing, you can, like, get away with, like, mid-range and stuff, but Graviton lands, I cannot do close quarters with that at all. If you miss once, you're done. Yeah. Yeah, which you know, is is good. You know, you, you don't want to have a weapon that's superior at all ranges. Mm -hmm. so, Cough, Thorn. Cough, really? Shut up. Thorn was fine. <laughs> Thorn was beautiful and perfect, and you all ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, and, and all of this stems from the original topic about the Redrix's Claymore. And one thing I wanted to bring up was that I think that's a fantastic reward for running Glory. That, that, is, mm -hmm. that is a great incentive to run that. I really wish there were more things like that for other game modes. Like, I wish there were a reward. Maybe not it's equal, but, you know, I, I wish there were something like that for, for the, the Valor playlist. I wish yes. there was something like that specifically just for running strikes and whatnot. And... Yeah. They do kind of have that. What was that? They do kind of have that for Vanguard. They have it to where if you get, um, what, rank 50, I think? No, you get, if you get a rank 40, you get this really cool hand cannon for Vanguard. From Zavala, you're right. You're right. Yeah. The new one. Yeah, then. You're absolutely right about that. And then Which an exotic ship at rank of, 50. I'm not aware of this hand cannon. What it's is it? got Outlaw on it. I forgot what else yeah. it does. It has Outlaw, and it's a good archetype. I think it's just supposed to be a good PvE hand cannon. Mm -hmm. It looks really? pretty solid. It might even be good in PvP. But mm -hmm. you, you need to get to rank 40, so it's a, quite yeah. a grind if you have no tokens. Interesting. Or if you have all the tokens. Yeah. <laughs> or if you ran plenty of strikes yeah. beforehand, yeah. <laughs> I may or may not have like just like at least like five hundred tokens just chilling over on PC. <laughs> I think I turned in six hundred tokens and then got me to like rank twenty five around ish. Yeah. So okay. mm -hmm. even so, Time you probably need like around a thousand. 
You know, it's funny because a buddy of mine, Radiant Duke, I play with him all the time. Um, he had like eighteen hundred Vanguard tokens. That was wow. the he was the dude who was running heroic strikes before they were good, and so like he just boosted himself straight up to like forty or fifty. <laughs> I wish I had your you foresight, been, man. Been grinding Nightfall for uh, the exclusives mm -hmm. and tokens. I need some more of that stuff, man. Yeah, you know, I, I like this. I like Bungie's. I, I like that they're pushing forward with creating some new exclusive content that's tied to specific. I love that there's that fantastic new shotgun you can only get from Escalation Protocol. I love that there's, you know, Regix's Claymore. This is definitely the kind of uh, stuff I want to see moving forward, and I'm very happy to see that it's continuing with mm -hmm. the stuff that we're going to be getting in the upcoming patch on May 29th, and then, of course, with the stuff in summer, and then later this year in September. Why don't we go ahead and talk a bit about some of that uh, Destiny 2 development roadmap? Does anybody have it pulled up? Yep, I have it right here. Why don't you, uh, why don't you read us our rights? What are we getting this month? Uh, this, this month, uh, at the end, on May 29th, we have Faction Rally improvements, which is awesome. I, yeah. I've been waiting for them to come back. Uh, Crucible Labs, Exotic Armor Sandbox Changes. Yeah, they're going to be starting that off. And I think they've got yeah. that listed twice on there, right? Like, it's going to be a one-two yeah. punch. Interesting. In July, yeah, July is where you see the um, more exotic armor sandbox changes is at the bottom of the list for July. Yeah, so I, I, so I guess that means that they're going to get some exotic armor sandbox changes, you know, implemented by the 29th and then, like, maybe another half of them. Up. This is still kind of exciting. Of course, uh, exotic armor sandbox changes were originally scheduled to come out with Warmind, and they had to push that back. The reason this mm -hmm. is so exciting is because this is kind of the first time they've done like a wholesale revamping of exotic armor in uh, in, in Destiny. There were a couple of ish er, instances within D1 where they changed up some perks and whatnot. But as as I, I do believe uh, John Wisniewski talked a bit about it, this is the first time they've kind of done a full like brush of a lot of the armors that they've already had in the game. And I'm still mm -hmm. trying to figure out what exactly that means. Like, you think there's going to be, like, armor masterworks and whatnot? That'd be cool if they gave us catalysts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be sick. I love the catalyst system in Warmind. I think yeah. it's done yeah, wonders pretty... for exotics. Mm -hmm. I have one issue with catalysts. Like, I found a lot of them were too easy to get. Really? Mm -hmm. Like, my favorite example of this was getting the crimson one. I had been. I was just randomly leveling up my hunter on PC, doing the story mode, and out of nowhere, I got the catalyst um, for Crimson, and um, just killing a random man. I was like, "Oh, that's cool. Let me see uh, what it does for my Crimson." And then I realized I didn't even have my Crimson in my inventory. <laughs> yeah, and it just dropped. <laughs> I had no idea where it was. It's like, wait, I got this reward for Crimson without even like knowing where it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I feel like it should have been more like um of a secret and like harder to get like the for the world line zero mm -hmm. and people like took forever to figure out how to get i feel yeah. like oh go ahead yeah no go on go on go on um like noticing like from what people have been saying like around like my chat and everything it's been i i've gotten like four of them so far four catalysts and some folks who've been grinding just as hard as i have have only had like one or none drop yeah. which is bonkers like yeah so it, it, Dreamer luck thing <laughs> on on PS4. Um, I'm trying to bring like my playtime down on the console just to keep it as as little as possible because I'm trying to like get everything on on PC. One of the last play sessions that I had, I got the uh, Vigilance Wing Catalyst to drop on mm -hmm. there, and I have I have a couple others. I think I have a Borealis, if I'm not mistaken. I think I might have. Is it Borealis? The one that changes element, Darcy. Darcy, thank you. Yeah, it's Darcy. I got the Darcy one, and then over on PC, dude. Like it was probably just a couple days ago that I finally got my first one, and it was for uh, it was for Jade Rabbit, which I didn't have at the time. But thank God for Zer and his engram. <laughs> oh, wait, you can get the catalyst for Jade Rabbit without even owning it at all. Uh yeah, that's wow. a little weird. That, that's that a little weird. weird. Yeah, I, that, yeah I, I thought you had to actually own the exotic before the catalyst dropped. I, mean, I didn't have it. <laughs> I mean, it dropped from Zern. I was like, oh. So not, yeah, not, right. only do you not, need cool. to have, not only do you not need to have it in your inventory, you don't even need to have it on your account. <laughs> or to That's get the so catalyst cruel. to drop. <laughs> 
I, I, I will say that is that that is a little interesting. Um, it did catch me by surprise when I got like the tractor cannon uh, catalyst to drop while I was farming kills with the world line zero. I thought it was a little weird. I thought you at least had to have the weapon actively equipped and using it to get the catalyst to drop. And I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it being RNG getting the uh, like completely RNG getting the catalyst. I think uh, Ramez. I, I think I would agree that I if they had some kind of secret objective that you had to complete to unlock the catalyst and then the catalyst quest, yeah. that would have been pretty cool too. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I, I guess I really shouldn't complain. I've gotten like five catalyst drops just running around and playing random bits of content. Be mad, Nim. I, Stay mad I know forever. on console, on the first day I got like four, and then when I moved yeah. over to PC, it took me like a whole week to get one. Yeah, It's yeah. really weird. RNG. I had been doing exactly the same same thing. So, yeah, it's it, just RNG. Yeah, I got like all of mine just killing mobs. Just, just going out mm -hmm. and like doing lost sectors or escalation protocol. And it doesn't, like, mm -hmm. doesn't really seem like there's any rhyme or reason to it. Man, do you think that they'll deepen it a little bit? Like, because, like, um, for Darcy, it's like, what, 300 kills, 300 precision headshots? Something in like order that, to... yeah. Yeah. Um, but then after that, you just have it. Do you think that maybe they'd, like, add, like, a step in between somewhere down the line? Oh, man. Like, to add additional, like, perks or stat changes to the weapon? Yeah. Add more yeah. catalysts every season? Yeah. Oh, that would mm -hmm. be interesting. Ooh, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be neat. Like adding an extra, per another extra perk to a gun, or like so just like changing swap, up its stat. Swap masterworks depending on what yeah. person you use. Yeah, like, and yeah, like you swap around. Swap Damn around. It, I want yeah. it. <laughs> that'd be cool. I mean, I mean, now you know. Right now, Bungie's taking feedback on the game, so maybe that might be something to send their way. Or catalyst, and please <laughs> give us masterwork and catalyst and stuff for exotic armor. I mean, we, we oh. haven't really heard anything about this exotic armor sandbox change. We're probably going to hear about it in the coming week mm -hmm. uh, in the TWAB for that, or maybe they'll put out some, uh, some, some developer insight videos talking a bit. About it. If the changes to exotic armor are half as good as the changes that have come to exotic weapons, I'm excited for how these things are going to be improving. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, they've what's been a, really good so far. What's a change to like an exotic armor piece that you'd like to see in like a catalyst form? Let me pull up Dim. You give your answers. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've got some worthless warlock gear that I'd love to see some changes come to. Cost the stag! Cost. The stag! Maybe, like, bring back, like, the old um, armor perks from, like, D1, like, grenade recharge energy. Mm -hmm. and, oh like, my um, god, yes! Like, health regen on orb pickup, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. that bring that back as catalyst. The first <laughs> <laughs> yeah, agreed. See, like, like my ideal setup for like if if they were going with this whole mod system is just have an armor or a piece of gear with like four or five just blank like spaces for mods, and then uh -huh. be, for you, you for you to be able to customize what mods you want in that mm -hmm. gear. Do you want you know? Do you want this raid piece of gear to actually you know you know have stats or perks for like the crucible? You know, mm -hmm. slap a mod on there. Yeah. You know, like just make, let us allow to, or allow us to let us customize our stuff like how we wanted it to instead of just kind of like just dropping it with a static, you know. Armor is very lackluster in Destiny 2 right now. It doesn't have mm -hmm. any of the characteristics or charm of um, the armor in D1. Oh, where, yeah. Like, you know, you, you, specific armor had significant impacts on like, lessening your grenade recharge rate. I think, what was the optimal yeah. grenade recharge rate in D1? Like 20, 25 seconds? It was something like that. It was silly. Crazy. <laughs> and like, I think even even with fully modded gear in, in D2, it's like a minute and 17 seconds at the fastest, which is... Yeah, that's, that's without using certain... Certain exotic. and whatnot, yeah. yeah. And like, and that, that certainly... Armor basically right now is just cosmetic. You know, works on mm -hmm. or, or more about you know whether or not you get resilience or health and whatnot. It doesn't really change too much of the way you actually play, and yeah. um, that's certainly something that that exotic armor sees a changing. You know, exotic armor has uh, has 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 specific perks that can impact the way you play. And I've got I've already got my perfect example for for an exotic 
ar piece of armor that needs a great masterwork to make one change to turn it amazing. Luna faction yeah. boots for the warlocks. Right now, mm -hmm. what they do is that mm -hmm. when you step in and out of them, they restore your magazine. Give us a masterwork that makes it so I don't have to step out of the freaking thing. Oh my god. It's just, it's just, it's just constant reload. Like on maybe like a four second interval. Just constant reload. Boom, 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 boom. So you don't have to do so anything. That'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be worth grinding for. I mean, it'd be it'd mm -hmm. completely destroy DPS phases. Holy shit. <laughs> Nobody in your team has to reload. Who needs Titans anyway? Who needs? Barricade? <laughs> rift. Get out of here. Stand in my rift. <laughs> they've been really into like oh well if it's broken let's break it more and see what happens so like uh yeah. like half phase argos <laughs> yeah, yeah i'll take it i will i take that that's uh, that that's my example that's 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 what i would like to see that's the caliber of change i'd like to see on some exotic mm -hmm. armor can you guys think of any exotic pieces of armor you'd like to see uh change Ooh, there's so many <laughs> yeah if if like knucklehead radar if it had something along the same lines of the um new warlike saying alchemy yeah yeah, yeah. God, if it, great. something along the lines but you had to grind your ass off for it. like yeah that'd be neat dude what if knucklehead radar gave you radar and non-radar game modes hmm? hey yeah. <laughs> i'm surprised everybody it doesn't. would be wearing it <laughs> yeah <laughs> He's I feel so like some people wrong. think it does. Yeah. Serotonin in chat says all the Aeon armor needs at least something. <laughs> like, yeah. literally in the synergy steps. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think those are okay, you know, if everybody's actually using them, but using them. Yeah. <laughs> I keep getting them. like seven or eight of them and just sharding the hell out of it. Mm hmm. That's, that's my infusion or infusion material right now, you know? Mm hmm. Aeon Gauntlets. Thanks! That's what I wanted, Zavala. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, in addition to uh, armor, or uh, the exotic armor sandbox changes, we are getting Crucible Labs. Ooh boy, Crucible Labs. Now this... That's gonna be interesting. ...is something mm -hmm. rather special. You've got the, uh, the roadmap up. Do you want to read what, um, what they had to say about Crucible Labs there, Danfinity? Why, certainly. Yeah. Uh... This is from design lead Derek Carroll. I can already hear you asking, what is Crucible Labs? And I'm glad you want to know more. Update 1.2.1 will include a new feature intended to give you a peek behind the scenes and a louder voice in our creative process. Crucible Labs will give every player of Destiny 2 access to experimental PvP content. We'll then have a chance to solicit your feedback to give our final iterations. You'll learn more about Labs before launch for today, with it making an appearance on the roadmap, I wanted to give you a preview of our goals. More to come soon. There we go. There we go. Crucible Labs. And uh, yeah, a lot of people immediately popped off and said, that sounds a lot like, hmm, thinking emote. It sounds an awful lot like a public <laughs> test realm for PvP. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Yes. Maybe? Possibly. Per it doesn't sound like they can update it on the fly as quickly, though. Especially yeah. if it's for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and given yeah. this is this is Bungie we're talking about here, yeah, I wouldn't expect that to be the case. It takes them a while to, to push out updates, and they take their time with that stuff, you know, arguably for a uh -huh. purpose with the spaghetti code, sometimes changing one thing. <laughs> I mean, you said, <laughs> like, I love, like, what they did with, like, um the new um system they have to, like, remove, like, super broken things, like with, what they did with Rat King. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dead. So they can, like, make changes on the fly they've shown now. Yeah, and they, yeah. they got rid of that thing instantly. I think, like, yeah. that, the, 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 the Morning War Mine came out, and, like, that thread popped up on the subreddit, like, oh, they fixed Wardcliffe. Here's Rat King, like, that <laughs> afternoon. It's gone. It's just like, <laughs> oh, well. That was impressive. Yeah, the, yeah they got that yeah, out quickly. Yeah, that was insane. To the point where most people didn't have a chance to even try it. It was nuts if you didn't get a chance to try it. Absolutely nuts. I didn't even know what it consisted of until, like, a day later. <laughs> What happened? Why can't I use this? Like it was it's just broken. And I'm like, yeah, like what happened with it? I, I still I've never even saw like what it you know was, yeah. but it sounded silly. But you're right, they've proven that they can they can hot fix the game like with the quickness when they need to. And yeah. with this with this Crucible Labs thing, I doubt it's gonna be a true PTR. 
uh, mm -hmm. in the vein that you're probably used to if you play games like World of Warcraft or like The Division or Overwatch, I think, has a PTR where like it's a completely separate client from the main client of the game that, you know, you get mm -hmm. your account cloned on. I get the feeling this is probably going to be like they're going to add a new and we talked about this, I think, before the show. Um, I, th I get the feeling what they're going to do is they're probably going to add a new playlist where they test sandbox changes and maybe new game modes and stuff like that. That they'll give everybody, everybody who owns D2 is going to have access to this, uh, to Crucible Labs, which is cool. I thought this might be, I, I, I was really hoping we'd get like a public test realm um, mm -hmm. with D2 and I, I felt like it was probably going to be only on PC, but it's going to be for everybody, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets to test it. And I, I, I get the feeling it's probably going to be like a playlist for a They'll have different sandbox changes, like maybe changes to uh, time to kill and stuff and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. active and new game modes that everybody can go test out. And then once you're done playing through that, you can give them their feedback and they can change things up before they push it out to the rest of the game. You know what? Come to think about it, um, before D2 released, several of the developers were talking about that they were able to go home mm -hmm. and play Destiny 2 in their own private yeah server you're right oh. so this may be something to that effect where they're allowing players to access like you know parts of that so they can test out things and tweak it mm -hmm. so maybe hmm. we're getting access to some of that stuff. so what are, hmm. what are you we can go in, in order starting with Ramez then dan then you know what are your hopes for crucible labs here what do you what are you what are you hoping to get out of this I think it sounds amazing. This, this, I think this sound. This is mm -hmm. definitely coming at the right time for D. Hmm. Uh, I don't honestly play that much PTR stuff in general, just because I don't like to get spoiled for like new yeah. stuff that's coming out. Like if it's, like if it's just um like stuff like sandbox changes, like time to kill and movement, I probably won't play it. But if it's a new game mode or something. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll definitely turn it out I really get the feeling like that maybe not when Crucible Labs goes live in a couple of weeks but like maybe sometime during the summer I get the feeling they're going to put a new game mode in testing there was a lot of hubbub about a new game mode at the uh, the community yeah. summit they had a little while back and like maybe mid-summer they're like I mean the Crucible Labs this week this new awesome game mode we need your help testing I'm down. Please, yeah. please. Well, it's going to be playable at E3, I'm pretty sure. Oh, abs oh absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so, what about so you, That man? would be smart for them to collect more feedback. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm impressed that they're doing this, first of all. Whatever, whatever it turns out to be. If it's just like, for a week, it's like, hey, guys, test out all these changes that we made to auto rifle. Or, hey, guys, oh. test out, like, all these changes that we've made to fusion grenades or like just something like that. Like it seems like it'll be fun. I personally probably won't go into it all that much because I'm not a huge PVP fan. I'm more the PVE guy. Um, and it does raise an interesting question that destroy Nader um, brings up. He's like, do you think crucible labs will have PVP players having too much influence over PVE gameplay, which mm. is something that like, was argued in D1 as yeah. well, but I I don't know. I, I just don't see myself jumping in or having that much to say in feedback for PvP, other than I, I, I have fun with it when it's Iron Banner. Yeah. Outside of that, it's like, <laughs> I grind Valor and will have negative glory by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think Bungie is ever going to start nerfing things again. Mm-hmm. Like if like if they find that things are too imbalanced for PvP, I think they learn their lesson and they're just gonna buff everything else up. So I think PvE is fine in that case. And they're like PvE is in a really good spot. PvP still needs a lot of work. So yeah, yeah absolutely. And that that does certainly seem to be their philosophy uh, within these past couple of months. You know, they're, 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 the era of nerfing things that kind of began with the Taken King and and moved on until uh, really Warmind came out, seems to be over there at Bungie, and they're going to focus on finding the outliers, the really well-performing things that are super-duper fun, stuff like your Graviton Lance, stuff like your Vigilance Wing, and they're going to try to bring everything up to that level, and I love that. Um, hopefully we don't have to worry too much about them putting too much emphasis on the feedback from Crucible Labs 
and importing that over to PVE. It is called Crucible Lab, so I'm assuming that it, it's just going to pertain to changes coming to the Crucible and, mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. And they, they, they do seem to understand that uh, balancing between PVE and PvP does need to be separate. And um, I, I, I would hope that that's the case. You know, if people go into PvP and say, eh, auto rifles are too weak, make them stronger. You know, that stays mm -hmm. in PvP. In, yeah. I, I think my biggest concern with them collecting feedback from everyone is that's kind of how we... <laughs> Like arrived at you was they listened yeah. to everyone and it was all complaining and it's like yeah. uh, it's like I don't know if I trust everyone's opinion to like yeah. improve PvP like maybe have it to where you put in some significant hours to have access to it even you know yeah because yeah, because right now it looks like there's no requirement on access to to Crucible Labs it's just available mm -hmm. to everybody who plays uh, D two which mm -hmm. means. Yeah, there's got to be a lot of noise pollution <laughs> yeah. there. Absolutely. I hadn't thought about that. I, I wonder how they're going to gleam, uh, uh, what's the kind way to say this, worthwhile feedback from yeah. the, the massive storm of people who are going to be in there saying, auto rifles suck, pulse rifles suck, scouts play are too strong. <laughs> you play through a week of, the play of, of Crucible Labs, like whatever random thing it is. You get to the end, and it's just somebody that has spent that entire week just to give feedback, and at the end is just like, "Fix your game." <laughs> That's it. Come on. Just, <laughs> our feedback That's is fix your feedback. game, Bungie. Fix it. Can't believe you've oh done this. <laughs> no, I have not. I've seen them do it on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> there's no, there's no limit to access on Twitter, so it's gonna happen. Nim, what about you, man? What are, What are your hopes for Crucible Labs? Honestly, I I, I I play, you know, Crucible here and there, so I'm hoping to see them push out, like, different sandboxes, you know, like, if, if, mm -hmm. if they're going to um, do any changes to archetypes of weapons or yeah. how time to kill or, you know, ammo economies, um, because, man, heavy. <laughs> <laughs> A little rough um, right now. <laughs> yeah. So... But I think I think for first and foremost is going to be for like different types of like game modes and playlists and stuff like that because they're Definitely. pushing this out in like a week. Yeah, it's about mm -hmm. to come so out. It's, it's relatively quick, and I mean, if I've learned anything over the past like four years of playing Destiny, is that like they don't push things out this quick. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm I'm setting my expectations that, that Crucible Labs is going to be, you know, a place for, for them to try out new game modes, uh, for players to give them feedback to see, you know, whether, you know, if it's going to be fun or if it just drags on too long and stuff like that. Ideally, I would love to see sandbox changes in there as well. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm at, you know, that's that's where I'm at with that. Yeah. I would say I'm, I'm, I'm virtually in the same spot as you, Nim. I, I'm excited for this, especially if they show off some new game modes and whatnot. Uh, I think that'll be neat. But the one thing I'm probably looking forward to more than others is if they use this as an opportunity to test different sandboxes. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. we, we do know that they're listening right now, especially uh, you know with, with the videos that have come out from guys like Josh Hamrick and uh, Kevin Yanez uh, talking specifically about the time to kill of weapons in the Crucible right now. And... Um, I, I, I would love to see them test a lower overall global time to kill uh, mm -hmm. somewhere around where like maybe the Graviton Lance is right now and see exactly how that works before they push that out to the live game. <laughs> I get the feeling that, that Bungie's definitely taking baby steps towards lowering that time to kill in PvP. Yeah. And I think they're super, super duper afraid, like a, like a shivering hunter in Alakul Strike with like Light Switch or something on. They're afraid of dropping that time to kill by too much because they think it's going to just create absolute chaos in the, uh, the Crucible. And, you know, maybe those yeah. fears are warranted, but um, I'm looking forward to, to hopefully testing out new sandbox environment when Crucible Labs goes live. Hopefully, dude. We'll learn Hopefully. more about it in the coming weeks because it's a week away. It's We're almost week. there. Like that blew my mind that they just announced this awesome sort of uh, private test change thing coming in like a week's time. You're right. Yep. Bungie doesn't do this. They don't push stuff out that quickly. Whoa. <laughs> like, I didn't even like mention that at the community summit at all. Was yeah. Total surprise to yeah. me too. Uh, and so that's why. That's why it's like normally you hear it like. Half
beforehand and then like they start re- teasing it like months and then you it'll yeah come out like two months afterwards yeah. i'm excited man and hopefully we'll be mm-hmm. learning more about that this week yeah what do you say we uh burn through the rest of those roadmap things we got some stuff coming in summer don't we yep yeah, absolutely uh july we have solstice of heroes seasonal events we have bounties yes Thanks. yes yeah Finally. Expansion one and two raid layer prestige, PC clan text chat, year one triumphs, and more exotic armor sandbox changes. All right, so I, I don't know about you guys, but the biggest thing there for me is bounties. Not even kidding. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy those are coming back. I loved running daily bounties back in D1. Screw year one triumphs. I don't care about those stupid books. <laughs> Give me my bounty pot back. But UBL, <laughs> don't you want to do in game stuff? To buy a shirt? To buy a $30 shirt? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Look, man. It has my name on the side. That shirt's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're really nice. Don't get me wrong. I got mm-hmm. but... Yeah, I've got mine. You know, another one. Wear it every now and again. Yeah. 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 We're getting I'm bounties. Guessing, I'm guessing the bounty stuff is going to go under pursuits. Mm-hmm. What I'm Probably. Most likely, yeah. A lot of real estate there. Yeah. yeah. And, you There's know. Like 50 slots open there for that. It could even mm-hmm. be something stuff as simple as like the nascent dawn quest that we've got for mana right now, where it's like, you know, mm-hmm. go get precision kills or go do a couple of lost sectors or stuff like that. Uh, maybe for the different planets and whatnot. I like mm-hmm. it. I, I loved one of my that one that was one of my habits back in D one. Just log in, do your daily or your daily bounties, and uh, you know, back in the day when you could select story missions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, individual strikes whenever you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm super happy to see that coming back. And I'm just kidding. I like Triumphs, too. They're neat. <laughs> it's, something, it's something to chase for that, I, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm going to get. Mm-hmm. But, you know. It gives you those unique emblems and whatnot that uh, when people come back and later you say, hey, where'd you get that? You had to be there. Had to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm excited for bounties because I feel like it will be an, just another thing that you can do each, like, for those who are like the hardcore players to do every day that maybe mm-hmm. like someone someone who's like more casual is not able to do yeah not like advocating against them but like there needs to be there needs to be at least something more in depth to to keep you coming back every day and this feels like that they're adding more of a commitment to um making it a hobby daily investment We'll see. I feel like, and again, probably hot take, but I feel like with with the bounties, they're they're going to take the challenges, which already sort of seem to be mm-hmm. like That's bounties, true. because they refresh on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. That's true. And they're 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 taking that in, instead of having it just as a passive thing there that you're going to be able to physically go to a location in the tower, pick them up. Yeah. And then do them because I mean, in, when you really think about it, challenges. There's a lot of challenges. There's a challenge. Mm-hmm. There's three challenges per patrol zone, mm-hmm. so they're all over. So you have the ability to cycle through and do whichever ones you want to get the XP in form of tokens for you to turn those in for mm-hmm. rep and gear. So I, I mean, I, I guess people love the, or the feeling of just you know pressing the X button and just spamming all those bounties. <laughs> in. Yeah, I love great. that. I love that. I used yeah. to do that shit all the time. I used to get all of the Vanguard ones and all of the Crucible ones and just get them all done and just like turn them all in at once. It, it was yeah appeal, but I feel like you're could... already in game. Yeah, but you also used to be able to like kind of hoard them a little bit as well for massive mm-hmm. XP. Yeah. Yeah, and so like you're Those like, oh, okay, I have this thing That's for true. well, and I, I mean like you had this thing for like, okay, I gotta kill this many Vex on this planet, or like I have to do so many kills on this planet, and you could kind of like synergize your activity that way. But see, one of the differences time. in that though is that the bounties back in Destiny One, um, the XP went to something. The XP mm-hmm. went to your armor and it went yeah. to your weapons. Yeah, as yeah, to yeah. Now, that's true. They, there's nothing there to to really for them to go for. And therefore the token system, that's where it comes in. So you get that XP and you're holding it there and you turn it in at will whenever you want to get that bar up and whenever you want to get the gear for 
respective vendors and stuff like that. That's legitimate. Mm -hmm. At least a lot of the bounties in D1 were also just significantly more challenging than the ones we have now. Like there was mm -hmm. one for like not dying. Like, yeah. Two thousand XP. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah. There were some tough crucible ones that all the crucible ones are pretty easy to get now, but there were some that were pretty tough back in the day. Yeah, and ones yeah, for like fun. playing specific game modes. Mm -hmm. like maybe if they had a bounty for Rumble, people would play Rumble or like doubles mm -hmm. or something, you know. Incentivize people to play the, that other content with bounties. And with Age of Triumph, they revamped some of those bounties and brought to you, you know, the, the special ones that actually dropped weapons and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, and like uh, right. Shax and uh, and Zavala in them. I'd love to see that. Uh, I, I mean, you, you know, building on something Dan said, um, right now, one of Destiny 2's biggest problems is what I call the uh, milestone burnout. When you finish your milestones, a lot of players feel like they have no other reason to play Destiny, uh, Destiny 2 because they're not really working towards anything. And I think mm -hmm. daily bounties are... You're definitely right, Nim. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of the challenges that are available every single day. Those kind of do take the place of uh, the old EXP bounties we used to have. But maybe they could tie in... Uh, maybe they could tie in a powerful engram or two when it comes mm -hmm. to completing, uh, completing a set amount of bounties a week. Yeah, I mean, and they can, they can continue the, the, the trend that they're doing with the exotic quests by doing what they yeah. did back in vanilla, tying certain bounties or turning in certain bounties, and then you'll get, like, the thorn quest or and the yeah. mentor misses. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Cool stuff. Oh, we, st we still don't know how to get uh, Black Spindle. <laughs> <laughs> the swindle! The spindle swindle. <laughs> Nim and I spent, like... <laughs> A couple hours, <laughs> or man. two, yeah. We, we, we investigating that rumor about the Savathun song strike, uh, weird audio oh, text. Oh, the door and open. Yeah, we we we, we spent oh, a couple yeah. hours in there trying to figure that one out. The spindle swindle. You <laughs> you fool me once, shame on you. You fool me for two hours, still shame on you. I can't believe you did this. <laughs> we'll figure it out. It's probably gonna be it's it's probably gonna be a time gated thing with like um maybe a select nightfall or something. I thought it might have been tied like of course the black spindle dropped with the heroic version of the Lost to Light story mission. So I yeah. thought it maybe it's tied to like uh, Ikora's meditations. So I've been keeping an eye on those, trying to see when like the not the Zol um, meditation pops up. She had Nakris um. This uh, this previous week, and I went and did that. Didn't find anything special in it, though. We'll figure it out. It's gonna happen. Yeah. All right. You want to finish up the uh, roadmap there with what's coming on later in the uh, summer? We kind of skipped over Solstice of Heroes, but we don't know what it is right now. So yeah, <laughs> it's a name. Thing. It sounds neat. Uh, <laughs> uh, somebody pointed out on Twitter that it's not actually on the Solstice. So whatever. Uh, um. <laughs> September gear collections, records, weapon slot changes, weapon randomization, new gameplay modes, and more yet to be revealed. Wonder what that means. <laughs> more yet to be revealed. Give it a couple of weeks and you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> well, I'm assuming that's the actual DLC content itself. Um, yeah. Mm. Which we'll probably be learning about in a couple of weeks at E3. Mm. Yeah. So, I have a question for you guys. Mm -hmm. With the recent announcement of Black Ops 4, including a new mode called Blackout, which is their take on a Battle Royale, do you guys want to see something of the sort in Destiny 2, or good God, keep it away and burn it with fire? Uh, okay. Dan, I go. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I feel like Battle Royale is going to be a very interesting marker in gaming history. Um, yeah. And especially mark this section of it uh -huh. um, to, to a T. Just like brown and like the gray, like sepia, gray and sepia tones <laughs> marked the early 2000s of gaming. Yeah, I feel like battle royales will do the same. It's it's a trend, and it's it, it makes for some really exciting gameplay. Uh huh. I Definitely. I like it when it's in, done in an interesting way. Division has a, a really cool battle royale, it does. but nobody yeah. plays it. Nobody plays nobody it. Plays it. <laughs> yep. It, yeah. Died. So, but like, it's it's just a it's just a trend, and it'll be around for as long as it's around. Personally, I think it might be a mistake to 
charge 80 bucks for a battle royale uh, in you this day and age where you can get one for free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. when you have one of the so world's nice. most popular free. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's, if, if it came to Destiny, it would ha- they would have to do a lot to change it to make it interesting, I feel. Yeah, I, mm. I don't know how well that would work. I mean, because if, if, if it's the same style of Battle Royale we've seen with like games like Fortnite where you know, everybody's dropping in and finding guns, I don't know if, uh, if that'll be a thing that Bungie does. Mm-hmm. Well, and the, yeah, with, with Division, you have to drop in. You have, you have to constantly be keeping yourself warm yeah. while also fending off infection, while also like <laughs> fighting yeah. everybody. And... Like you have so many time management things, you then have to craft items in order to use them. Like that, it, it's there's a lot of different systems that work there, and and a lot of battle royales. There's just not that many. It feels mm-hmm. like it's definitely an interesting uh, interesting trend within the current age of gaming. I think you're right in that you know it'll as a trend it'll last for like maybe another half decade or so, and then it'll. Mm-hmm. it'll Litter off just like uh, you're right, Sepia Tone in the early 2000s, zombies games in like the <laughs> the, the, the 2010s, um, mm-hmm. and now you know, battle royales. And I still yeah. like zombies, <laughs> I like zombies too. I'm still waiting for Dying Light 2. Where is it? Hand it over. Um, I and, feel like mm-hmm. we're at a peak right now with the battle royale games, yeah. You know, definitely. Fortnite yeah. definitely hit that peak, and we're 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 on top of that. And little by little, we're going to start to see that decline until the next trend like just comes along and it yeah, comes in fun. next thing. I have to say this. Are you even allowed to talk right now, Ramis? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not going to comment on like what's actually going to happen. Good. But I, but, um, wait, going back to what you guys said earlier, there's a PR mode for Call of Duty was that a joke or no? It's that real. Is, that, thing? that is a There's legitimate thing. A 100 that's player hilarious. battle royale mode is coming in Black Ops Four. That's that's so hilarious. <laughs> 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 They're foregoing a story mode altogether yeah. for this. Wow. Yeah, no story yeah. mode, but we're getting a 100 player battle royale. But they, wait, did they confirm the number already? Because I hadn't heard about the number. I think they did. I, I it... hadn't heard about it. Oh, maybe I'm just wishful thinking. Yeah, I, I would kind of assume that Activision, Blizzard, or someone would make a battle royale game, but I didn't think it'd be a Call of Duty game, though. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I saw the writing on the wall. Looking at how much money Fortnite's made, Activision wasn't mm-hmm. gonna not do that. <laughs> yeah, pay eighty dollars and then pay pay eighty more dollars in order to get all this stuff. That just yeah. doesn't like make sense. Yeah. And an additional forty for the next map. Yeah, yep. exactly. Here it comes. Be, yeah. be ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, and it's gonna be on on Blizzard as well. So mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's neat. That's interesting. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. I heard that, and I was just, oh, Activision. <laughs> you you oh, knew it was coming. Oh, Activision. You knew I had yeah. to do it to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, like a lot, a lot of that stuff, and you know, a lot of people like to point the fingers at Bungie for it, like Eververse and stuff. But uh, there's a lot of similarities in microtransaction world between Call of Duty and Destiny. A lot of like the emotes are like nearly identical, yeah. and the way that I'm the pretty sure they work. use the exact same studio for their mocap and like just use the the, the, the exact same yeah. stuff. Because some of the emotes in in later Call of Duty games now are they they are carbon copies of the ones we have yeah. in Destiny. They're they're identical. So, um, ident uh, you know Activision is is consistently going to be the mastermind behind adding whatever trends oh. that are going to be coming into the... Yeah. How about when they added supercharges to the last Black Ops games where it like, had like a <laughs> striking titan yeah, and what else did they have? <laughs> they had the golden gun. The golden well. gun. It, Self-res. Those are all yeah. coming back in Black Ops 4, by the yeah. way. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, like, hey, Mega Mag, which is in chat right now. Why innovate when you can chase trends, baby? Dollar signs. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> now there's a couple of other big things on that development roadmap that we're going to have to go through really quickly uh, so we can get into viewer questions before the end of the show here but of course they talk they they, they mention randomization for your weapons mm. that's a big thing i wonder what that means hmm do you guys think they're going to bring back fully randomized perk rolls on guns because i don't i don't no. think so either 
I don't think so. I think they're probably going to take that system and like, evolve on it. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, they, they combined the whole Mods 2.0 system and the weapon randomization. That, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Notice Mods 2.0 is no longer on the roadmap. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I can I, see it being, like, a seasonal thing, too. I, I certainly hope, you know... It, I, I get the feeling it's not going to be fully randomized rolls, so like every weapon that drops is going to have uh, different perks and whatnot on it. I think, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think you're right in them. I think they just kind of mixed it in with the mod system, the mod changes that they were going to be making that hopefully maybe allow you to kind of customize the weapons you already have. Yeah. Mix and match the perks you want on them. You don't really have too much to go off of there, but uh, <laughs> you know it's coming. <laughs> we can spec it. We can we can make a, a, a fifty thousand view video easy right now, speculating on it. <laughs> Confirmed. Randomized perks are coming back. Also, I've got it on a great source, Aya Saluna. It's coming, but only to my account. <laughs> <laughs> only, to my, only to me. But uh, I, I yeah. think with the trend of changes they're making, they're taking a lot of risks, and it they wouldn't are. Mm-hmm. like. I think if they do, I think I think we'll definitely be surprised, and like it'll be something we won't expect, probably. I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope, hope so. so. Looking forward to it. Um, right alongside that, the other big uh, change there was weapon slot changes. Now, I have no idea what that even means because I I, I, I can't. I, as as <laughs> Thomas smiles devilishly in the corner. Ugh. Three out of four people in this uh, podcast don't know what's going on. We have no idea what it means. <laughs> There's one person who has it all, and he can't say anything. Not a word. <laughs> Not a... Just sit there and smile. Just smile devilishly at the chat. Just... Are you even allowed to laugh right now? <laughs> I think I'm. I think I am. I'm allowed to laugh. I just can't vocalize. Uh, I guess. Blink twice. <laughs> <laughs> Link twice if Deej is on the other side of your camera holding a hawk moon to your head. <laughs> he has the NDA just like this. <laughs> Behind that camera. It's great oh, though, you know, I, I, I'm i super happy that it's even mentioned there. It, it filled me with such joy to think about, oh, they're doing it. They're actually yeah. taking a risk and doing the thing with changing the way the weapons, uh, the weapon slot system is going to work in D2. I have no idea what it means. I wasn't at the mm-hmm. community summit, but I'm super psyched to learn about it as we move forward. I think this summer is going to be a really, really interesting time for Destiny. And um, when it comes to the trajectory of D2, I absolutely, a couple weeks into Warmind, I absolutely now 100% uh, believe that they've, they've turned the ship. It's, it is yeah. on the right track. It's going where it needs to go. I, I, I still, I, I think I make a joke of this every week on the show, but the saltiest Destiny 2 player I know, my buddy Black Fox, been one of my buddies for like 10 years now, that is the saltiest D2 person you will ever meet. He has been on <laughs> Destiny 2 every day for the past two weeks playing. He like, has, and I saw him day. raiding the other day too, and I was about, I was going to mess him, I was like, you're raiding? Yeah, he hasn't <laughs> played for like four or five months, and like, he did not leave the game in a good spot. He was very unhappy with it, and he's been on every day. And I, that's the thing. All of the salty PVPers, they're all playing it, but they're all playing PVE. Yep, that's the thing. Yeah, it's it, there, there's there's tons of stuff to do now, and uh, it, yeah. it's it's definitely on the right track. And I'm very excited to see where a lot of these changes go moving forward. It's going to be an exciting couple of months to say the least. All right, was there anything right, else Thomas? you guys wanted to? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go pester people right after that. I'm going to slide into some DMs right after this podcast. (laughs) It's going to be great in the future. Right? Right. (laughs) But all right. Was there anything else you guys want to talk about before we get into some viewer questions? I think we're set. Um, I had, I thought of an idea for a BKR mode track for Destiny actually was opening up uh, the patrol space, removing the load zones and removing all the enemies and hopefully allowing that to load in more players. I, I'd love that. that way. They have the random chest that they can just put more of them. That's where you get your weapons and stuff. You know? Mm-hmm. You know, a great, you know, work. Now that I'm thinking about it, a great way to have it would be to like restrict loadouts. Um, <laughs> go in there with legendaries and whatnot. And chests drop, well, you know, chests will randomly drop. That'll have like exotics from uh from d2 and maybe even some exotics from d1 could you imagine if you're in like a battle royale and like a a chest spawns and it's got hawk moon or a yeller horn or yeller horn (laughs) boy i mean this would be a great thing testing crucible labs honestly yeah absolutely that's Mm -hmm. a great idea 
I'd love it. I, I think, and I think exotics would be the, the a good way to work with that. You can go in there with whatever legendaries you want, but you want the super powerful uh, last word drops in a chest in there. You get to use it until the game mode's over. That'd be cool. Yeah. And vehicles. Oh yeah, vehicles. we definitely have yeah. Sparrow. Yes. We have like random tanks here and there. Oh my god! Could you imagine if they dropped the tank in there? Oh my god. <laughs> They focus oh the tank. God. Focus the tank. Only use it once. Yeah, like one drops, just one yeah. drops, in like the I middle of the battlefield. Raid relics in PvP. Oh, like, it's like if they have specific maps themed after like either Vex or Hive or Fallen, and like you get a uh, a sword or the shield, uh, scorch cannons, even like that'd be so neat. Hmm. Yeah, that that would work too. You know, just. just... Weird little random drops in a and then man, we were making fun of a uh, battle royale in Destiny, but now that I think about it, hmm. <laughs> like all of their technical limitations have been with just like because of like how many enemies they want to put on the screen. If they just got rid of all of them, they could maybe get away with like thirty to fifty players in a patrol space, maybe. Just a yeah, bunch God. of uh, just a bunch of extra <laughs> guardians. I could see it. Yeah. Not a bad idea at all, man. <laughs> not, a, not a bad <laughs> idea at all. <laughs> Well, right on. What do you say we uh, we do some viewer questions before we get on out of here for tonight? Yeah, man. Sounds good. A couple Let's of those. It. I saw some that were far back in chat. I got to scroll to them. Yeah, that's what I'm doing too. <laughs> in the meantime, I've got one for uh, one for Dan and for Ramez. What do you guys? Uh, what is your favorite, either changed exotic or new exotic in Warmind? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Probably tractor cannon. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent that. It's a it's a giggle gun. You can yeah. I I got a two piece today in a uh, quick play match, just waiting around the corner, and I could see them showing up on the radar, and I was just like, just peek the corner, just for the love of God, please, and just <laughs> booped them into a wall. It was so good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I've been using oh, it in really... PvE, just launching golds across the map and stuff. It's been yeah. hilarious. <laughs> also, shutting down supers is stupid. Oh that, my like, god! Yeah, because it, it happens instantly. Instantly, I oh, and especially what was it? I was on the um, the shores, um, distant shores. Right. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. I was on distant shores, and like on on the um. On the A cap side, there's the ca there's the cavern, and then there's a deep cavern yeah. where you can just die. If I booped the other day, I booped an Arc Strider out of his super into the chasm. <laughs> just absolutely Stupid. bullied. Took his lunch money. Just jeez. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, just so stupid. Tossed and I giggled the, the entire time. Just tossed him the L, and you watch that poor guardian just fall to his death. That's the best, yeah, though. You catch somebody like mid jump over a over a cliff or something, and you just boop them and just watch them <laughs> fall <laughs> off without their second <laughs> jump. It's great. Yeah, tractor cannon is pretty fantastic. I would agree. Yeah, it's, it's, a lot pretty, of it's really fun, dude. Yo, I agree, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've got one from a buddy of ours, Hungo. He says, if there's another DLC coming, what kind of expectations would you have? Uh, for example, types of enemies and how the story should be. Well, of course, there is another DLC coming. It's coming in September. Mm -hmm. um, type of story? <laughs> Probably the space triangles. Space Doritos <laughs> are making their way in. Something flushed out. So <laughs> oh, wow. Tell uh -huh. us of your, your, your rage, Nim. You got some problems with the way story's done in Warmind? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little on the fast side. It's, it's, it's a little bit on the on the quick side, you know. Kind of stone through it. Four missions. <laughs> yeah, it's like four like missions. Thirty minutes. Four missions, two strikes. Two of them were missions. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel like whatever we're gonna do next, because like they've been using the roadmap of the final cinematic. And like this is all over the place, but like it seems like a good theory so far, seeing as how we've hit Mercury, now we've hit Mars. It would stand to reason, but you go to the reef, yeah, and yep. then Dreadnought 
or like maybe those two things are kind of combined in some way. I don't know. It would. I think it would be interesting to see Fallen on the Dreadnought, like trying to find something out. Get him out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't belong here. Wait, belong have you sorry. ever fallen on the Dreadnought? I po- we don't know. Oh, possibly. Yeah. We're, we're, we're basing this kind of off of the, the cutscene that happens at the, after you've yeah. been in the main story. Uh, thus far, it, it's shown the places we go to in all the DLCs in order. Like, it showed uh, Mercury first, then it showed uh, Mars, and then it showed the Reef, and then it showed the Dreadnought, and then it showed, you know, the Space Doritos and whatnot. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, it's led to the theory that it, that was showing us the order in which we were going to be getting our DLC locales. So, a lot of people think, you know... I begin the reef and then the dreadnought after that. Yeah, that'd be that'd be neat, dude. And it certainly makes sense for the fallen to be on the dreadnought. They go everywhere we go. They literally <laughs> yeah. follow us around and touch all our stuff. So yeah. they're trash yeah. collectors. They are trash. They are. That's what they're there for. They're trash collectors. Yeah, and we surprised. you know we we do have the little hint uh, in Mars as well. Mm-hmm. So they're they're you know they're already starting to push that through, which is funny because like. In one of the grimoire cards, like back in D one, they 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 say that he dropped somewhere off entirely. It's like on the yeah. other side of Mars, and then yeah. he's in the Hellas Basin. Which he's is, right there in a lost sector. There's a ship. Uh, oh, hey, we got a, a question from uh, Hey, it's DT. Oh, old uh, oh, hey, Planet it's Destiny DT. streamer. Uh, do you prefer the current campaign slash DLC format where the story is introduced and finished in one tidy package? Or would you prefer a longer fucking plot slash boss that spans multiple DLCs or even D2 slash 3 and 4? I will start. <laughs> I would like to see them arcing it out a little bit more. Every threat that we've had um, so far, I think maybe the Oryx was probably the exception. We have killed off way too quickly. Um, yeah. I understand that we've gotten, mm-hmm. you know, over time and killing all these gods and stuff, like we've gotten powerful, but there has been no sense of an actual threat yet. Um, they when, when they marketed Destiny 2, you know, they made this whole big deal about a without light and you know the marketing (laughs) was really really dark and you know you start off the game and it's super like emotional you know when you're walking Mm -hmm. through through you know through like the open wildlands and you're limping you don't have any powers um uh then five minutes later you are running around and then you start story mission number two (laughs) you get your light back immediately all that tension's gone yeah, all yeah. sense of tension and wonder of how you're going to get through this without uh, without any abilities is just completely gone. And, you know, we, we see Gaul and he has this, you know, all this amount of power. He has a whole fleet. And again, you know, we, we just, we kill him too soon. Um, yeah. It just seems like it just goes way too quick. And they have so much to go for or from. Like, they have such a rich lore. That uh, I feel like we're just going through these guys. We killed a, g- a, one a god, god and a high priest in thirty minutes. <laughs> five, yeah, five five minutes after meeting them, you know, Knockers didn't even no. get a word off. Not not a single <laughs> word was dropped by the eldest son of Oryx. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, like cool guy, cool guy is in chat right now. The worm gods are supposed to be the baddest of the bad, but you can solo him in Destiny. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I understand that they have their own throne worlds, and the worm gods probably have a stronger ascendant realm because they're that much closer to the deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it, like in that cutscene, we, and we talked about this in the previous podcast, that it, it, yeah. it looks like, you know, uh, Zol just completely negates you know, your abilities, and he stuns you, and you can't do anything, and he seems menacing, and, you know, and then Great he's scene. next thing we know he's 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 just an Alaskan bullworm that shoots fire. <laughs> <laughs> the Alaskan bullworm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like I, I I Destiny just it needs that much more of a sense of like you know there's something actually happening and going yeah. on. Yeah, that's better than Callus is though. Like like Callus is just in the background pulling all the strings, you know, yeah. and we have yet yeah. to even like face his true form. 
And maybe yeah. we will one day. Maybe yeah. we won't. Then he'll just keep fucking with us for like the entirety of Destiny 2. <laughs> We're basically well, I mean, his right handyman. Now, yeah. Well, yeah. right now, Callus is pretty much like our bro. Kind of like, yeah, <laughs> our bro. Exactly. You know, he's like, he's giving us these gifts and making us fat with So power. he can eat us later. That's what That's they true. do. Like, it's probably like a Hansel and Gretel type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, the inside, the, the armor itself makes you look like you have dad bod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Titan one, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, styling sure. us after himself. We're, we're mm-hmm. all gonna look like uh, Big Big Daddy Callus at the end of all of this. <laughs> we've already got his emo. We've got we've got both of both of his emotes. <laughs> so we're, we're 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 halfway there. We just gotta we just gotta work on the beer belly and get the dad bod. So <laughs> good, dude. I've been working on mine daily. It's yeah. been great. Grow fat. We will grow fat, Callus. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I would agree with most of the things you guys have already said, so I don't think yeah. to add anything there. We got any other questions? Let's see. Let's look at chat here real quick. Going back to that, though, I'd like to see like actual raids themed after the DLC and stuff more. Yeah, yes. yeah, um, for it, sure. It definitely blew my mind that like Zal, neither Zal nor Nakris had any part of the raid. Like. Mm-hmm. They, Wow, <laughs> I thought yeah. they, that was a really quick introduction in depth for for two of the more storied characters in the lore of uh, of of Destiny, um, kind of like Osiris, Ooh, yeah. man. And then like I I figured okay well well they're dead we're probably gonna face them in like their throne world as part of this raid layer and then nope not even a mention of their throne <laughs> yeah. world or anything like that. <laughs> do you, do you guys like the new like layer system as opposed to like the 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 DLC or the the previous run on uh, in Destiny One. I don't have a problem with it because I understand the motivations behind it. This kind of goes mm-hmm. back to the the original development schedule for uh, for for Destiny One, as it were. If you guys remember Destiny, the contract that Bungie had with Activision was that they would have a major release in the, the usually the end of, the end of summer, start of fall, so around September, mm-hmm. where we get our main game releases and our big expansion releases. And in between those, we would have two DLC content releases. And as part of that original development schedule, they were supposed to have a raid within the main release and a a raid within both of those content DLC releases and then a raid with the expansion. And that wound up that that's what we got, you know, with Destiny Year One. And it wound up being way too much work, way too much on Bungie's plate for them to complete within that time frame. That's why we didn't have a raid with House of Wolves. They kind of had to scramble to get that done and then focus more of their efforts on revamping the Taken King and whatnot. And so that that being in mind, that's why they they, they changed things up kind of with uh, with Destiny 2. And uh, I don't have a problem with them creating a one gigantic raid. So the environment is the Leviathan. And then basically mm-hmm. you're going to have three raid experiences tied to that. One main raid experience and then two smaller raid experiences, which are really just kind of, you know, jumping puzzles and then one raid boss. And yeah. I, I guess the reason I don't have a problem with it is because I understand. I, I understand why it is that way. It's because they <laughs> almost drove themselves out of business trying to create <laughs> three unique raids a year uh, while yeah. also simultaneously developing DLC in an expansion. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't bother I- me. I I personally like the raid and then the raid layer stuff, um, but the I think one of the biggest disconnect like disconnects from there is that we're st- the raid layers and the raid itself is still following the kind of like the subplot of yeah the main yeah thing. it's one big story yeah exactly rather than touching with anything that, mm. that brings you know within the the current DLC yeah so there's no tie in. Yeah, mm-hmm. Warminder, it has nothing to do with Rasputin yeah. or Hive Gods. You know? mm-hmm. um, again, I, I, like, I like those systems, and I can see why they're doing it, but um, I, I really miss having the thematic raid. Me yeah. too. Yeah. You know, okay. Back, back but, in the day. Well, would you rather have, okay, so say next expansion would be Hive theme. Would you, would you like to see like one big Hive raid that the next two DLCs both be Hive theme? I feel like people wouldn't like that. There's too much hive or something. If they'd all fall in one theme or tied, all tied in together or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will. I mean, if you look at the raid layer, all following the same thematic stuff. Anyways, I mean, even even the weapons are shared throughout the main raid and the raid layers. 
Yeah. Um, the main raid uh, is was missing four weapons from its, from its loot drop that were added onto the layers. The layers, as opposed, yeah. As opposed to when you look at the raids from D1, it was an entirely different set and an entirely different so there was a whole lot more to get while not being cut off from loot from the main raid experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. I just I miss some of those visa, like just seeing them the- thematically tied in. They're cool, man. Vaults of Glass yeah. was cool. King's Fall yeah. was cool. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Wrath of the Machine, they were cool. They were these. Really awesome cinematic experiences, and I definitely do miss those uh, those big experiences. I think we're probably going to be getting one like once a year. It'll be like the main yeah. expansion, like like this next coming expansion is probably going to have a big main raid like that, and just mm-hmm. in between them, you know, with the smaller DLCs, it'll be raid layers tied to it. Yep. I'll live. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we all will. Yeah. Uh, real quick, we have a question from our uh, fellow co-host Mega Magwitch in chat. Uh, do you think we'll get a true new race of enemies with the September DLC? The Taker and Taken are a cool way to try and make a new race, but I want to see something new and not reskinned. I'm right there with you, bud. Me <laughs> too. Right there with you. That's I right. mean, we were people. supposed to. Yeah, we were supposed to get new enemies. With it turns out that the knives just picked up a shield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have ice on them, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're frosty they boys. They're frosty. Yeah. Yeah. They're frosty, frosty boys. boys. Frosty, frosty boys. boys. <laughs> they, they they make nice like crackling sounds when you break them. Now yeah, yeah. like shattering ice. You, you did know, get your new enemy, Mega. <laughs> as far as new enemy types, I've been thinking of what I want to see, and I don't know if this is too dark for Destiny World, but I actually want to see humanoid enemies that we fight. Yeah. yeah, right. And like yeah. be like dramatic tension between two warring factions, and like you being half to fighting other guardians or other or other humans and stuff because of like political differences or ideologies, either the traveler or whatever. You know, I think it'd be really cool and, tr- and interesting lore wise. Are you, are you suggesting that maybe everybody in the tower goes against the uh, the new monarchy? <laughs> They tried to take over one too many times. Exactly. Just <laughs> everyone against the monarchy. A giant boss. faction war DLC faction war. would be pretty cool. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. I, I, I love, just as a side note, I love how Mega Magwitch said, Thralls have been watching way too many TBL streams told them to stay frosty. <laughs> they took it to heart. They took it to heart. And I, I'm sorry. I, I formally apologize to everyone. It's my fault that you have ice hive. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. But uh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope we get some new enemies and whatnot too. I mean, uh, I, I love D two, but it's, uh, it's time to, time to bring in something new. Yeah, I would love to so see you know to reskin. Human, yeah, enemies <laughs> as well. I thought we were I getting mean, frames with this DLC. You know, that would have been cool. That would have been cool. Yeah. But all right, what do you guys say we, uh, we cut it off there? Get on out of here for tonight. Yeah, Sounds I think that's the same. Right on, right on. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to episode 157 of the Planet Destiny podcast. And a very special thanks to our returning guest, Mr. Ra- uh, Ramez. Welcome back. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you for having me. You, you, you're great on here. Where You're welcome anytime. We love having you on here, man. Thank and, you. And the, the devilish NDA grin. Like, <laughs> we, should, we should steal your visage <laughs> and turn it into an emote. Just Ramez like, just wait till E3. Just wait till E3. <laughs> I can't wait. We're just a couple weeks away, man. <laughs> and of course, to our brand new host, Dan Finity. Welcome to the show, man. You did a fantastic job in your first episode here. Cannot wait to continue working with you in the future, man. Same. Thank you guys so much. Right on. So before we get on out of here, we are, of course, going to give everybody a chance to shill their stuff, tell everybody in the world where they are across the internet, what they've got going on, and what they like to do. Starting off with our guest, Mr. Ramez. Who is you? Where are you at? What you do, man? Uh, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Ramizo5. And I like to sleep and play video games. <laughs> that is life. My <laughs> man, that's it. If my life could consist of nothing more than sleeping and playing video games, I would die happy. Completely. 
We got, got some okay. links to that man out there in the chat. Go give him a follow, man. Give him a sub. He's awesome. Does raid carries. Hopefully, Spire of Stars someday soon. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have to throw the go. ball. Throw the <laughs> ball. <laughs> you your, your backpack there, buddy? Uh, <laughs> I hope it's big. <laughs> And of course, All Mr. Right. Dan Finity, welcome to the show. Where are you at on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dan Uh You can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Dan I'm there almost every day. Uh, you can find me Thursdays here on Planet Destiny from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern. You can uh, also find my podcast, SideQuest Sunday. It releases every Sunday on just about every podcast platform. This week we had Hidden In, and next week will be Evil Aura. So. Ooh, that guy's cool. Nice. Evil Aura's yeah, neat. I love it. I love it. it. It's been such an awesome thing to do, uh, SideQuest Sunday, because I just get to hang out with buddies, <laughs> like for the most part, and just talk about their origin story, and it's been super fun, and it's, it's really awesome. Right on, man. Make sure you're checking that man out. Toss him a follow. Stuff. Nim. Nim plays here <laughs> on Twitch and on Twitter. Bam. There you go. Short, sweet, and to the point. Yes, and of course, sir. I am the Black Link. You can find me pretty much everywhere across the internet. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at the Black Link. As of right now, I'm still the only Black Link. Just me. It's just me. I, I don't I don't know how the internet has existed for this many years and there's only been one black link, but it's me. I did it. <laughs> but all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is gonna be it for episode 157 of the Planet Destiny Podcast. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you're here with us live, stay right where you are. We're gonna be rating somebody right after we're finishing up here. So go through the Destiny directory or whatever directory, it doesn't matter. Pick out your favorite streamer, tell us who we're sending the crowd over to. But those who are listening to the podcast, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. Bye, everybody. Good night. Bye.